Welcome to Pop Out Workshop. As a carpenter, there's two things that you're going to have to have with you all the time. One is a tape measure and two is a pencil. And today I want to talk about a carpenter pencil. What is the big deal about a pencil? Well, it turns out there's quite a bit. Let's get started. Before we start today's video, I've got a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms. What does that mean? That means that my videos are not being recommended as often as they used to. How do we change that? I need your help in a most urgent way to be able to like this video, share it with as many people as you can, and subscribe by making these three simple changes. It really will trigger those algorithms to be able to get the recommendations back out to everyone in the woodworking community and the CNC world. So if you like the videos that I'm producing, you like my teaching methods, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, let's get back to today's video. Now, the first thing I want to talk about on this pencil, it's flat. It's not round, so it's not going to be rolling around. The idea behind that is that if you throw it down on a roof, it's not going to slide off because it's not going to roll. Now, put a piece of plywood at a very shallow slope. Nothing even close to what you would find on a roof. But if you take a regular pencil, even dropping it down almost you know, vertical, you have to have it where it's literally straight in line where it won't roll off. Because any angle, it's going to take off and roll. If you have a pencil, like your standard pencil that you can find just about anywhere, it's going to do the same thing. The only time, if it's near that same in line position, it'll stay put. But any other angle, it's going to be rolling away. But with a carpenter's pencil, you can throw it just about any different angle and it's going to stay put. So it's, that is one of the main reasons that it's flat, but that's not the only reason. Now in my much younger days, when I was actually working as a carpenter, these pencils were actually a good measuring tool. They actually measured across here a half an inch and going this direction they were a quarter of an inch and that's ideal for being able to use as a spacer. Now I went through all of my carpenter pencils and not one single one nowadays is that size. They're all larger. This average at about 0.58 of an inch and the thickness going the narrow way was about 0 0.28, 0 0.29 of an inch thick. So they've gotten away from that traditional quarter inch and a half inch size. But what the heck, what are these pencils being used for more than anything today? I think for the most part, they're just being used for advertising. But I know that there's still a lot of carpenters out there that wholeheartedly believe in a carpenter's pencil including me when I'm working out on a job site with my kids. And the old school says, get out your utility knife and sharpen the pencil the way you're going to use it. Because you can put a very sharp point on it, you can keep it fairly blunt, or you can sharpen it to various needs of the type of job that you're on. Now over the past so, several years, they actually came out with two different types of pencil sharpeners. Guys, I really don't recommend using these pencil sharpeners, especially if you're trying to do a professional carpenter's position, they might laugh you off the job site. But what they do is make a very long point on the pencil, and it doesn't really give you too many options. So I, I highly recommend 
using the trusty utility knife to do the sharpening. I want to show you a couple of times on how to do the sharpening. But first, start about a half inch from the end of the pencil and using your thumb to be able to push the knife through, you're going to cut down to the point where it exposes the lead. And this will take just a few strokes. Don't rush. Take a little bit at a time. And you can just carve away the wood and expose that lead. Now it's also a good idea on the job site, sharpen both ends of the pencil. It's like having two pencils instead of just one. Now once you get the lead exposed, then turn and go ahead and trim the shoulder. Because up until this point, you wanted to leave that shoulder in place to be able to give extra support to that lead. But now you can carve the wood away to be able to expose the lead on the shoulder. And that's really just how easy it is to be able to sharpen the pencil. And keep in mind, you can put any type of point that you want on this. Now I want to show this to you one more time so that you can get a good look at it. To be able to sharpen a pencil, and this I went ahead and just made a short pencil out of this, but you're going to start at about a half an inch back and be able to cut down with your utility knife. And you're going to be able to take small amounts of the wood away to expose the lead. Now don't rush this part because if you rush it, you run the risk of breaking the lead off. Even though you have the shoulders on each side, you still can run the risk of breaking the lead itself. So take your time and take small, smooth, even strokes. Now you want to leave the shoulder on while you're sharpening this so that it doesn't make this lead too fragile. So we have the one side exposed. We'll flip it over and do the same thing. Just slowly work down to expose the lead. Now I want you to notice how I'm using the thumb to be able to help push this knife through the wood. It gives you a lot of control so that you can cut just exactly what you need. Once you have the lead exposed, then you can work on the shoulders and slowly cut this down to be able to expose the lead. Then you can trim up the sides just a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. And that's how you sharpen a carpenter's pencil. Now this is blunt, and if you want to be able to put a point on it, you can just work this and be able to put a sharp edge on it. Flip it over and get the other side. The other thing you can do is change where your point is going to be. Because you can put a point on this and you can make it anywhere that you want. And a lot of times the carpenters will put a point at various places along this area so that they can use it as a scribe. And this is typically how you would make a pencil to use for a scribe. Because now we have the point on this one side and the rest of this material is cut away. But how do you use it as a tool to scribe a piece of wood? So what's the big deal about using a pencil as a scribe? Well, oftentimes you'll have a gap. And it may be between two pieces of wood. It may be some variations in a wall, and you're trying to set a cabinet, there's all types of reasons that you would use the pencil to scribe the material. But what you want to do is sharpen this so that this pencil point is the distance between this gap that you have. So at this point, there's zero line. There's no cut. And then as you scribe along, you start to see the pencil point. And that's how much you would need to cut away. And by having your pencil sharpened to this widest gap, 
it means you're going to lose the least amount of wood that you have to cut. And that's something that people often don't talk about. And that's how you would use the pencil as a scribe. And you can sharpen this any number of different ways. This is only just one way. Now I want to talk about the lead itself. This lead, actually, because it's much larger, it is a more solid lead. Because if you take a regular pencil, and this has been sharpened, and I use it on the construction wood, this gets dull and worn down extremely quickly after just a couple of three lines. Whereas with a pencil like this, I can keep going and do multiple ones, and I still have plenty of lead. And that, again, saves you time on the job site. You don't want to be constantly sharpening the pencil on the job site that waste time and waste money. So that is a big, big plus. And if you have a blunt point like this, it still makes for a very nice line that works perfect for your construction to be able to get accurate, to be able to get accurate cuts. So don't underestimate a carpenter's pencil. It is so valuable. How about a brick? If you need to mark a brick, how long do you think this little point is going to last? If I put this on here, it's pretty much shot. It's down to nothing, and I'm actually scraping into the wood just after a couple of, of couple of three lines. Whereas with this pencil, I can keep going and going and going and just keep on going. And I still have plenty of lead, even on something as coarse as this brick. So if you're going to be working in the construction field, get you some carpenter's pencil, even though they're not a half inch by a quarter inch any longer. They still are a very, very valuable tool on the job site. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.